when you're filming sex, like you're showing every part of your body. You're showing your asshole and you're licking assholes. And it's like, if you can just, if you can get through that and you can film 80 scenes doing that, like any sort of interview, any sort of camera thing you're doing, it's just a piece of cake. It's like, it's like how nervous can you be about something when you don't have to worry about getting a boner and licking an asshole or, and getting your ass licked for that matter. Like, it's just amazing. Like, it's just like, oh, okay, let's do it. What was the question? <laughs>
I drive a really masculine car. It's a Corvette. And I was out in East Texas visiting my dad at his lake house. And like, just having it parked out front and all these rednecks standing around it. And then I walk out um, with my dog, with my little dog, you know, like, it's in my, I'm like, hey, and like, they're like, this is your car. Like, and I'm just like this, like super homo looking guy. Like, I just, I love that. And so like, same goes with, I'll be, like Ariana Grande will come on the stereo and like I have my windows down and I'm pulling up to a stoplight and I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm just gonna let that shit blast loud and like, you know, <laughs> let them look over at this guy in his car. Like, yeah, I, I, that's a, definitely a guilty pleasure. Like to bend the stereotype a little bit. I, I love to bend stereotypes like that. <laughs> gonna get my asshole wax. So get all ready for this big movie. <laughs> What it takes to keep up my brand as Kyle Ross has changed over the years. In the early days when I was 18 and I was just this fresh twink with like this fresh young face, I mean, it kind of sells itself. You know, I want people when they see a picture or video of me, they know it's me right away. And so something that I've kept consistent is I always have my bleach blonde hair. Personally, I also have a blonde fetish, like I love blondes. And so I've, I've kept that to, so people can identify me as I'm going through this transition. Like um, more recently, I, I, you know, I turned 25 this year. And so I've been trying to change my look. I want to start bulking and start looking like I'm 25, not like I'm 18 anymore. I want to look my age. I want to adapt to the times. Oh my god. <laughs> Anybody can go and film a couple of videos and have it out and then get some attention for it and everything else and, and, and you know, you make some money doing that. But the ones that are around for a really long time, like I've been in this business seven years, it's, it doesn't just happen by accident. You know, it, it takes this perspective of, you know, you have to plan things out. Every move that I make, it, you know, I'm thinking about well, where is this going to go? And, um, you know, I'm not just a, a model for Helix where I'm doing uh, work on set. Um, actually, most of my work is in the office and I come in Monday through Friday busting my ass to help Keith and everything run this company. It's been a lot of work and just kind of staying associated with it and in the office it's kind of giving me this longevity that you know I would have had to earn other ways but like it, when you put in the work and the time for um, anything that you do it, it'll make or break you and if you think about you know the people out there who are celebrities that are you know famous for uh, anything even like Kim Kardashian everyone says oh Kim doesn't you know, she did a sex tape and she's famous for being famous. Like, no, Kim Kardashian is famous because she put in the work and because she's put in the time and effort and, and had this vision and, and busted her ass. That's very much the same for anybody who's in the public eye, any type of model and all that, you know, you have to put in the work and you build it out. And most people, they don't see that side of things. And when I talk about going out to the club or going to Cabo and all that, um, yeah, I'm having a good time, but also we're taking photos, we're, we're tweeting about it, we're uh, putting Snapchats out on social media, and that is actual work. If I'm really just cutting loose having a good old time, I'm not taking any photos. Or I'm, I might be taking photos, but I'm not putting them on the internet. Um, so everything that you see, um, that is some work that has been done to, to distribute that photograph or video to you. Okay. Okay, I'll give it to you right away. Or I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you and I'll Okay. Bye. Okay. And let's see, there's a couple of good ones. Oh, this one. Best of Kyle Ranks. This one was put out a couple years ago. I'd like to make a new one that has like, my personal faves. But we'll see if I can get that by. Here's uh, it's riding roll. This is probably one of the biggest on-camera dicks that I have. <laughs> I'm sure they might blur it for this. Oh wow. Let's see. 
Here's a really cool one. I love this because we get to see what our old places have looked like. Here's Max and Kyle's house party. This one, I really like the cover. There's me taking a dig. Oh. <laughs> It's called laid off, but it's actually job security, I feel like. <laughs> so, and that's our uh, DVD center. Being in the industry, it had the most profound effect on how I view sex in the early days. And I guess that makes sense. Like the first 10 to 20 scenes that I filmed, um, where sex usually was this experience that was, you know, it's sex, it's amazing, it's personal. It's, you know, you're just kind of, you can really get lost in it. And I think once you start filming, especially early on, um, it, you know, you're turning something that's only this amazing, awesome thing into now it's a performance. Now you're getting recorded. Now there's takes. Now there's all these different things. I, I've always been kind of someone that like, is cool with casual sex. Like um, the part, the parts that are intimate are like when you go out and do something special for each other. And then the sex is like, you know, it's sex. And I think that porn has reinforced that idea with me where it's, it's casual sex and, and that's okay. I think so many people in this world, their relationship is based like 80% on sex, whether they know it or not. They're putting up with this bullshit from their partner because that's where they're getting their sex from and that sex life is good, but maybe their relationship is actually really shitty. And so this way, at least with casual sex and like kind of, you know, porn reinforcing that, uh, you then start looking at the relationship as its own thing and the sex as a completely different thing. And you can, you know, when you take the sex out of it, you can really evaluate, is this relationship um, right for me or not? And, and you start uh, trying to surround yourself by someone that complements your personality versus someone that you're just sexually attracted to. And there's a huge difference. I've been in this relationship for uh, seven years with Max Carter, and after you know a certain point, like most relationships, we started having some problems, and like I think people get that seven-year itch, and like things just start getting a little crazy, and you know we we moved to Vegas together, and uh, to be honest, like right, right before we moved to Vegas, we were kind of having uh, relationship issues, and. We had started looking at houses in Vegas and we, we got the house that we wanted and we're literally like having this crazy argument and then find out, oh, well, we got the house. So, all right, let's make this work, let's move. And shortly after, um, we moved into Vegas and um, we took a family vacation to, uh, to Texas. So we went to go see his family and my family. Every year, like their family or his family, like they're really big on like we get Christmas presents for everybody. Long story short, like he gets me a ring and proposes. And, um, you know, someone that you're with seven years and like they're down on their knee and like, of course I said yes. Like I didn't even think about it. And for a while, like I was really excited to kind of take this next step in our relationship and it was official and like we told our families and it's announced on Twitter and you know, everyone's like hyped about it. And, you know, it was just, it was really exciting for quite some time. And then we just kind of had some struggles at home, like moving uh, was really stressful for me. And he started filming in the house, um, the filming, the 18 boy line. And that was like a whole nother level of stress. I made like a really tough decision and like we broke up and I moved out into my own apartment. And it was like the first time that I ever lived on my own, like no boyfriend, no roommates. And I pretty much restarted and like uh, left everything to him. There was just that point when things get like, I was just getting so consumed by it and I turned 25. Yeah, I was having my quarter life crisis, going through a move. The proposal like could not have been at a worse time, like honestly. So it just like, I just wanted to try something else at least while, you know, I had a chance. Like, it's like if I would have gotten married right away, I feel like, I'd hit 30 and then think, oh, you know, was there something else I could have experienced? Like, I really just think it's important to experience like single life, like being that independent person and not relying on somebody. So this is where the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of TV and stuff. I'm kind of a homebody, so this is the bedroom theater. 
Um, I just love the guests that come in. <laughs> this is where I do like my computer stuff, cam shows. I got this cool camera, a fan gift here. This one lets me like steer it with a remote so I can like sit back and do it. Here's my car collection over here. I just tell people now that I have six Corvettes. And then the uh, gay Vienna up here is really cool. This one was for lifeguards in 2018. Uh, we won best group sex scene. And the winner is Kyle Ross! One of the moments in my career that was particularly rewarding was when I won CyberSocket's best porn star in 2017. That was a huge moment for me because like I've done all this work over the years and I get paychecks and I have my scenes online and followers to count and that was the first time that I got an actual trophy recognizing my relevance in the world as, as best porn star and, and that was a viewer's choice fan voted thing up against uh, many other models and so to take that home it was validation for me. I was like, I was kind of joking, like, oh, now I can retire. I don't give a fuck what happens now. But it is really cool when a third party recognizes you and there's kind of a celebration and then to take that title. I mean, I have that up on my, you know, mantle and I show everyone that comes over and like I send pictures to my parents even and they're like, oh, well, you know, she, as long as you're getting awards for what you're doing, like it, it's, it truly is validation. Um, and so I think that was one of the greatest moments. Now what do you want to do? Now I'm going to try to figure out a way to put this up my ass. The touch made it difficult for Kyle to breathe. It was too much and not enough at the same time. Popcorn Kyle. I'm used to it. Kyle Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Chiding himself after the words escaped. The book is really exciting for me because it ha it's my chance to tell my story on the mainstream stage. And I've always tried to do this. You know, early on I was writing uh, the Kyle Ross blog and, and that kind of put me on the map and like, and, and people were actually interested in what I was saying besides porn, you know, it was, it was kind of cool. And so the book is, it's just my chance to tell my story and the story, you know, while it is technically fiction, we have the names changed, locations, um, and some things are embellished a bit or, you know, they're changed a little bit. It is pretty much the story of, of what I went through. And to be able to share that story and to tell the world, you know, this is normal. I think a lot of people, they're going through some shit in their life. Maybe young people, they're 17, 16, and they're coming out and they're having struggles with their own families. This is my story as finding myself as a gay person and, and like, finally embracing that and admitting that I was gay and uh, building my life around it. And so to be transparent like that and, and tell my story, I hope that others will read it and then they can think, oh, well, you know, my life isn't so bad or like, you know, maybe there is, this is gonna go somewhere. I'm giving my dad a copy of the book. Like he's actually read a couple chapters with me and like to hand him a chapter and for him to finish reading that one and then pick up the next one and continue, it's amazing because this is a story for everyone. <laughs> and uh, funny thing, like the, the one chapter I handed him, like I hadn't read it yet, and it happens to be the chapter where it's my first experience with a girl where I'm like hating it. And she's like trying to have sex with me and she's trying to do all that. And I'm just like, no. And like, it, and it's just like it, throughout the whole thing, it's just talking about like, oh, I cannot stand like girls and like, I just want some dick. And like, it's so funny that that was the first chapter I gave my dad to read. And, um, and he kept reading though. And he, he, you know, he just corrected a couple, you know, apostrophes here and there, you know, and he's like, oh, let's do, you know, but it, it's amazing to, um, to have a, a real story like that. That's, you know, that my family can read or that anybody could. Like I, ha I get to say I have a book.